With the project and its tasks in place, your next step is to assign the resources that will complete the tasks. In some organizations, a resource manager may be responsible for assigning resources to tasks, but typically this falls on the project manager's plate. In Project Web App, you can add resources and manage your enterprise resource pool in the Resource Center. To get there, click on the Resource Center link in the Quick Launch bar. In this view, you can see a list of all your available resources. If you have a large list, you can take advantage of the View drop-down box at the top in the Resource tab. You can sort by the different types of resources. You can also create your own custom views here. You can also create filters and group by. To edit a resource, you can select it. Then in the ribbon under the Resources tab, select the Edit Resource button. In the following page, you can edit various fields, permissions, and when you're complete, click the Save button. You can create a new resource by clicking on the New Resource button. There are three different types of resources you can choose. Work resources, people or equipment required to complete a project task. For instance, an IT project may require the skills of a DBA or a landscaping project may require a mulcher to get the job done. You create material resources for any resource that is consumable, such as bags of cement needed to complete a sidewalk or network cable for an office setup. And cost resource. These are dedicated to costs associated with a task such as travel costs or an item needed to complete the task. These types of costs can be associated with a cost resource. Cost resources differ from material and work resources in that they do not have a cost table rate and are considered necessary costs incurred to complete the project task. So for this example, we are going to create a work resource. Depending on the type of resource that you choose, uh, the various options that you have will change. You, if it's a budgeted resource, you can check this box. You check the generic box um, if this user is generic and you plan on replacing it with a uh, real user later on in the process. Here uh, you can choose whether the user logs into project server. If you check this box, you will notice that a user account box will pop up as well. So we'll give this user a name email address. If you have completed filling out the RBS table, you can give this user an RBS initials. If the user uh, has a website assigned to it, uh, you can give it the uh, website name and the link to that website. Here you add um, the user's login account. So in our case, we have an Active Directory backend. Here you can choose whether a resource can be leveled. Uh, the base calendar, we'll choose our phase two calendar. Whether or not the uh, default booking type is committed or proposed, you can choose a timesheet manager and default assignment owner. Uh, by default, these will uh, be the user that you're creating, but you can change this to any other, any other user. And some other options that you can uh, fill out as well. Choose whether or not to synchronize synchronized tasks with Exchange if you have that enabled. If you have filled out the resource departments field or table, you can choose a department for this user. Next we'll add a security group to this user. Uh, you can add the user to as many security groups uh, but you have to have at least one. In this case we'll use team member. Uh, same thing with the categories. You can add them to as many categories as you like. Uh, keep in mind that for each category that you add a user to, you will need to set permissions. And Project Web App makes it easy to uh, set permissions quickly by the, uh, giving you the ability to use out-of-the-box uh, security permission templates and the ability to create custom. So here we'll choose the team member security template and hit apply and you'll notice the predefined checkboxes 
for this per, uh, security group are set. So you have to go through each one of these and set the security. And when you're done, you can go down to the global permissions list, security list, and do the same thing. Choose a security template. We'll choose team member, hit apply. If you have filled out the team name table, you can also assign a team name to this user. And when you're done, you click the save button to save. So now let's go ahead and create a material resource, clicking on the new resource button. And you can see uh, the changes in the fields available to you when you choose different uh, types of resources. So in the material resources, you can see some things that are familiar, but this is not a person who logs in. We're going to uh, make this a conference room. You can give it a label. You can assign it RBS uh, field and some of the same types of um, options that you have, whether it's committed or proposed, the default uh, assignment owner, the rates, cost, department, and team name. And when you're done, go ahead and click Save. Now you can see that we have our new co conference room, we have our new user, um, and you can sort these again. Uh, by the types of resources that they are if you want to cost material and work as well as your custom views if you so choose in project web app 2010 the resource center comes with a couple of uh, nice tools for project managers to manage their resources um, Let's say we need to uh, find some resources. Uh, we want to see uh, where these resources are allocated. Um, you simply select a few resources that you want to check on. First, we'll sh show you the resource uh, availability um, button up in the ribbon under the resource tab. So after you select a few resources, go ahead and click the resource ava availability button. And you'll see a graph showing you um, some information on the schedules of these users. Uh, you can change this on the fly here in this area as well. From here and also from the main resource center page, um, you can uh, click on resource assignments. And this will give you a view of the exact projects and tasks that are assigned to each one of the resources that you chose. So this gives you an idea of where they are, what they're doing, um, and the other one uh, gives you an idea of their, their time. So these are really uh, nice uh, tools for a project manager to uh, manage their, their resources. You can also choose to show it in the time phase data view, or Gantt chart view. A couple other things to note is the uh, bulk edit button in the resources tab of the ribbon. Uh, with your user selected, you can choose the bulk edit button, which you can basically edit a few different uh, fields all at once for all users. And that's a nice feature. So if you want to make a bunch of different users uh, have the same timesheet manager and assignment owner, RBS, team name, cost type, or department. You can do this, you can select a bunch of them all at once and change them all at once. And when you're done, you can click the Save button. You also have the ability to open these users in Project Professional. So to do that, with the user selected, click on this button here in the Resources tab of the ribbon. And you'll be prompted to log into Project Professional. Now you can see the users that you've selected here and you can also edit all the fields that you see here as well as fields that are not shown you can uh, add them as well uh, so you could get creative uh, and add users uh, by copying from Excel spreadsheets um, or typing in manually uh, for instance if this is a user uh, you want to add a user that is going to log into the system they'll need a Windows user account um, so field 
So you can add that by clicking this new column, add new column uh, drop down, which gives you a list of all the available columns. So we chose that uh, Windows user account column, and then you can go ahead and put a name. And you'll notice that some of the fields will be filled out for you. And then you can go ahead and enter in the information as you see there. And when you're done, go ahead and close the project to check it back in.